What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Thursday, October 14th. Some big news in the world of the Yankee sphere, as I call it sometimes. Okay, so some big tweets come out. Um, there's a couple things to digest in here because really three people we're going to be talking about. If my eye is looking over here, I could have the Giants and Dodgers on. Okay, one, looks like Aaron Boone is not going anywhere. Um, I predicted he was not going to go anywhere. Um, and I also think that's the, probably the correct choice. That would be one that I agree with, with him not going anywhere. And here, here's the reason why it's because I think people who do not like Aaron Boone, what they actually mean is they don't like the regime and the plan as a whole. And I think that there's a valued critique to that. I think there's a legitimate critique to that. What I do not think is legitimate is pointing the finger at Boone saying, that guy. Mainly because a lot of people point to Boone at stuff that Boone has nothing to do with. Um, like poor player performance. Like Gary being not a good catcher. That's Boone's fault. No, shut the heck up. No, no it's not. Um, speaking of which, I think Hal is putting a lot of blame on players, which again, that, that is a stance that, I, that I'm going to agree with, and that's a stance that I did have agreed with in the past many times before. But anyway, back to Boone. So, I think there is a valuable critique to say you don't like the regime. But it's not valuable to say it's Boone. Be the reason why is because Boone is just a, a Pink Floyd re reference. He's just another brick in the wall. If you don't like the wall, you don't have to like the wall. But don't point it at one brick. That's my opinion. And I think... Um, I find most people who express their um, dissatisfaction with Aaron Boom uh, are kind of in the mindset that baseball teams are run like they were, like, I don't know, in, like, the 80s and the 90s, um, where a manager has much, much more say. Like, a lot of people say, oh, Buck Showalter should be a manager. No. Not for the system that's in place and not for the way that things operate. Um where the manager appears to be more of a middleman and less of a dis and less of an on the fly decision maker. And he certainly doesn't seem to be the ultimate authority on a lot of decisions. And I think we have proof of that across the major leagues. Um, I think first and foremost is Gabe Kapler. This guy was roasted and toasted like a marshmallow in Philadelphia, then immediately goes to the Giants and leads the Giants to the a franchise high season wins. That doesn't happen overnight. Um, there's a system, a large system that's in place. And Gabe Kapler is, again, a brick in the wall. Just like I believe Aaron Boone is a brick in the wall. So, I do not think it would help anyone, it would help the Yankees to get rid of Aaron Boone, because they would just replace Aaron Boone with another Aaron Boone. And I don't think it's going to get us anywhere. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure about Carlos Beltran, even though it's a popular name that people like to float around. I think people are just kind of saying that. Just because they like the guy, even though everyone was ready to roast the guy about two years ago. My prediction is that the Mets are going to say, screw it, we're just going to go with him anyway and rehire him. Um, I legitimately think that's going to happen. Uh, because everyone else has been rehired, so at this point he's the only one left. So if I were the Mets, who had nothing to do with the cheating thing to begin with, I'd be like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not losing this, I'm going with my guy. And then that's the decision I would make probably if I were the Mets. But the wheel puns are not in charge anymore. Um, Steve Cohen is. Um... Did Steve Cohen hire Beltran? No. Well, the Whippons hired Beltran, right? Yeah, cause Steve Cohen would give him the year after, right? Yes. Okay. Anyway, so... Um, Bel Beltran's a guy who's never managed before, and I'm not sure... Do you, Is it... For, for everyone who wants Boone fired, do you really want another guy who's never managed before? And that's an honest question for you guys. Um, and I know the answer to that. Now, Marcus Thames. I agree with this one. The reason why I agree is because the Yankees have the same problem year after year after year after year of lack of situational hitting. There's only so many times your team could have a lack of situational hitting and a lot of strikeouts before you start looking at the pitcher coach saying, what the heck are you doing? Um, so th th that's a firing that I do agree with. Who are they going to replace with? I don't know. Uh, but what this signifies to me is a, from the top, um, there's a recognition that at least the hitting strategy uh, is not working. And, and we hopefully can expect uh, some changes in that regard. And I think a lot of those changes will come in the form of players. Um, I'm going to post a link below that's going to name like, all my predictions of what happens to, to people. Uh, so Marcus Thames, I, I, I legitimately get this one. 
Um, and I think that this shows a, a bigger change is coming. And I also think it shows a lot more changes are going to come too. And maybe uh, involving some names and faces that we might not want to part with, but might. Now, Phil Nevin. Okay, I think everyone in the world knew he was getting fired uh, once he sent Aaron Judge home, and he got in trouble for that. I think no one's surprised by this firing, literally at all. In fact, some people are surprised he made it this far in the season. To the naked eye, I would agree with that. But listen to Michael Kidd today. Probably a good point. And uh, it's, it's a couple points kind of meshed into one that I'm kind of going to sum up. That, that really got the gears kind of turning in my head. He says, no one watching at home is going to know the difference between a good third base coach and a bad third base coach. And I'm going to, one, agree with him. Two, I'm going to put myself in that category also. I don't know w w what's going to make a good or bad thir third base coach in the majors, mostly because I I'm not looking. I really don't know. I also don't know what, what everyone's, what, what the coaches are talking about. Here, here's an example for that. The Yankees have like this astronomical amount of runners thrown out, particularly at home, but in the bases in general. Base running has been horrendous all year, but again, particularly going home. Um, and you can't help but wonder, is that Phil Nevis' decision? I, I want to say yes. Like I think it's very easy to point to him and be like, that's you. But then if I apply my same principle that I said before about the manager, does that also apply to the third base coach? And I don't know the answer to this. And here's what I mean by that. Is there a meeting, like the, the regime, does the regime decide, put your head down, run on contact? Is the regime deciding, hey, in this case, we're sending people? Does the regime somehow decide and communicate to Phil Nevin, Aaron Judge is going home on something at least somewhat like it could happen? Because maybe we don't trust Joey Gallo behind him? I, 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 I do not know the answer to that. I really don't. But what I will say is, again, similar to Marcus Thames, is the firing of um, Phil Nevin a recognition from the top that the plan is not working. And in order to have a new plan, we need new people. However, I still do think Aaron, that they think Aaron Boone is their guy to do that. I do not think Cashman goes anywhere. I do not think... Um, Boone goes anywhere. That's my closing thoughts on all the big Yankees news uh, from today. Um, again, read the article that I posted below. And, um, yeah, I'm going to revisit that article, by the way, sometime in the future. Uh, see how accurate I was.